Good afternoon. Today we're hearing from the people of North Carolina about the future of North Carolina, about investing in North Carolina in the next generation. So we'll all maintain and even improve the opportunities that the next generation have and the great quality of life that we have to offer from the coast to the Piedmont to the mountains. And to have this incredible turnout today is a, a testament to people hearing the message of investing in our future in roads, investing in our parks, investing in our ports, investing in our universities, investing in our community colleges, investing in our military. And the people are hearing this message and now we're asking the people and the leaders of these counties and cities behind me to lead. Lead this effort and start it today across the street in the state legislature. I'm also very proud to have them with me not only Several hundred, uh, several hundred city and county representatives here from across North Carolina, but I'm also very honored to have uh, several representatives that have been very supportive of this process and are also attempting to lead inside the legislature. One is Representative Dean Arp, uh, Stephen Ross, Bill Brawley, John Tolbert, and Craig Horn. Y'all need to give them a round of applause, and I appreciate them hearing from these people. Thank you very much. I'm also very honored to have Secretary Susan Klutz here, who's been not only fighting for our cultural arts and parks, but she's also been fighting across the state for historical tax credits. How do you all feel about historical tax credits? Yeah. I'm also very, very honored to have Secretary Tony Tata. He's one of the um, designers of this visionary plan, he and his team. Uh, he, he came from the military, he, he, uh, he's led schools, school districts, Wake County, and I'm so lucky to have him as Secretary of Transportation. He, along with myself, have been traveling the state, sending the message about we either invest in roads now or we invest in roads later when it's probably too late. And he, he is sending me a message and the people of North Carolina a message, there is a sense of urgency that we need to make these investments now, especially at a time where we're the ninth largest state in the United States of America. And we need to prepare for the future as opposed to react to the future. And Secretary Tata gets it. Y'all need to give him and Secretary Klutz a round of applause. <laughs> I'm also very honored, and I don't know if he's around here or not, but Lee Roberts, our budget director. This guy and Secretary John Scavarla, my Commerce Director, y'all come on up here real quick. Lee Roberts is the financial guru who, who put this plan together. That's affordable, that's fiscally responsible, and that's visionary from a financial standpoint. And I'm so lucky to have Lee Roberts on my staff and also John Scavarla who understands now more than ever if we invest in the future, we beat our competition for jobs because it's going to be a major selling point when we invest in our universities and our community colleges and our roads and our parks that we're selling quality life of North Carolina and opportunity. And John Scavarla and Lee Roberts, thank you all very much for your leadership. I appreciate it. I've got all these notes in front of me, but I don't need them. I just need to say a few things. We've, we've had an hour long discussion up the street. We didn't just come for a press conference. We've actually had a discussion with the people closest to the citizens of North Carolina. And these are these county and city leaders from out throughout the coast. We, we gave a presentation and then we spent a considerable amount of time having dialogue and taking questions and getting feedback. The people behind me who are visiting Raleigh today get it. They get that we have to invest in the future now. And the longer we delay, the more expensive it's going to get for the taxpayers in North Carolina. And the longer we delay, the less competitive their cities and towns are going to be when we compete with other states, including our neighboring states in South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. I told them very clearly that we're competing against my good friend Nikki Haley in South Carolina and Bill Haslam in Tennessee and Terry McAuliffe in Virginia and the rest of the world. And one of the great selling points as a governor is letting, letting people know that um, we're investing in the future just like we want you to invest in North Carolina. And those investments are going hand in hand.
So we're ready to move. We have a sense of urgency right here. And uh, I'd like to have other people talk about it briefly instead of me doing all the talk. And I do want to let the media know that also that I wrote a letter to the legislature yesterday stating a sense of urgency. And I'd like to compliment the legis legislature. They have gotten together and uh, just a few minutes ago I signed a continuing resolution, which is a much more reasonable time period than, than I was given earlier last week. They were talking about staying through September and even October. But now the continuing resolutions, I think, is less than 40 days and 45 days or so. We ought to be able to get our work done in less than 45 days. We've been here now five or six months. And uh, this is supposed to be a part-time job for these individuals. They got families <laughs> and they got businesses. I think they don't do it for the pay, I know that. They do it for public service. But we need to encourage them to focus on the priority items of North Carolina. And the priority items of North Carolina right now is investing in our transportation system, investing in our university system, investing in our community college system, investing in our parks, investing in our ports, investing in our military. And uh, we're going to do just that. Another major priority that we have that we talked about is we have to have an economic development strategy passed now. <laughs> For every one of these people behind me. I asked in my letter to separate, separate this from the budget. This cannot wait 45 to 50 days. We have to have this now. John Scavarla is working with some credible people considering North Carolina, and he has not got a strategy to be placed in front of him. When I gave my State of the State speech in early February, we said we need it within a matter of days, not weeks. We're now in the fifth month. And our competition knows we don't have the plan, and they're using that against us in this, in this very competitive world. So we also talked about other things besides the bonds. And that is a major priority of each one of these county commissioners and mayors and Chamber of Commerce representatives and others that are here today. They need movement from the public servants inside the uh, beltway here. And and now they're hearing from those people, and right after this uh, press conference, they're going to walk the halls and state their case. And I'd like to thank every one of them for doing that. that. First, I'd like to introduce uh, some good friends of mine. Uh, first of all, uh, Johnny Caswell from Burke County is the chairman. Our county commissioners have an incredibly difficult job. They have to run the school system. They have to run social services. They have to... The things on their plate are so many things out of their control. And one thing I stated in my letter yesterday to the legislators is we're not the only game in town. There are people waiting for us to make this decision. There are city governments, county governments, and there are businesses that are waiting for us to make decisions so they can make plans also. And it's not fair to them that we're not making these plans in a timely manner. So. I'd like to thank Johnny, and then after that, a very good friend of mine who I was just in a city yesterday, uh, Mayor Nat Robertson from Fayetteville. He's been a good friend. He's, he, he knows also important how important the military is, and the military is part of that plan. And in fact, I think my, um, hopefully my new Secretary of Military, where is he? He's here. Cornell. Thank Cornell, thank you for coming here. Y'all need to give Cornell Wilson a round of applause. We're so honored to have him here also. Uh, so with that, Johnny, yes, it's good to have you here. You sell it, man. You make your point. <laughs> thank you, Governor, and thank you for the invitation here today. On behalf of the residents of Western North Carolina, I stand here today in support of Connect NC. From a rural county, this is very important for us to have this project, obviously, for the, for the highways, the infrastructure that we have in, in the rural counties of the West. We need this. This is actually the future for us. Uh, Secretary Taylor, we, we need the roads. Uh, there's a lot of roads work in Burke County, and we do appreciate that right now. But as commissioners, we face each day the residents that come in and say, when is this going to happen? When is this going to happen? In Burke County, we made a tough decision in 2011 to move Burke County forward. It, it took a lot of fortitude for five commissioners to sit there and do what we did in, to Burke to move uh, forward. So I challenge this legislature at this time to move this state forward because it's the right time, it's the right place, and it's the right thing to do. So, Governor, we support you 100% in your effort to connect NC. 
the West is always, we've always thought that North Carolina kind of stopped at I-77. So, I've heard so that. We've heard that before, so we'd like to connect that western part of the state with the eastern part of the state. As far as economic development, I think those roads that, that, that are, are going to be built to us will help us tremendously. And, and everybody brags about their community college, but I can't say enough about Western Piedmont Community College. And we appreciate the dollars that will go to that college. The, the mechatronics program that we're trying to get into effect right now, uh, as far as JDIG and the Broughton property and what we'd like to see, a school of science and, and mathematics up there, we appreciate everything that's been done. We are in exciting times. The County Commissioners Association, I see a former president standing out there and one, our next president standing behind me. We're all aboard on this. This is, this is great for North Carolina. And Governor, I do appreciate the opportunity to stand here and speak for these few minutes in support of this program. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Nat. I was known as Mayor Pat. Mayor Nat. Thank you, Governor. What an honor to be here with you. You know, we've got a very important message to deliver today, uh, not only for the cities and the counties that, uh, that are in this great state of North Carolina, but also areas that affect uh, um, many others, to include our military and so forth. So uh, today's message, you know, I hope is a historic moment, a moment that will send a message to the cities and counties statewide, a message that will stimulate the conversation and action needed over the General Assembly. Last time the governor asked me to say a few words uh, about the importance of Connect NC. Uh, we took the message back to the Fayetteville City Council and the county commissioners took it back to the Cumberland County Board and we passed unanimous resolutions in support of Connect NC. We would invite each of you, in fact, we would challenge each of you to do the same. Take this message back to your boards, get resolutions, make the phone calls, get the General Assembly involved. You know, it not only affects us in the city and the counties, but North Carolina remains the most military-friendly state in the nation. But our bases need some help, too. The needs not only affect our military, but affect us as North Carolinians. Military needs strengthen state road networks that will better serve the same areas that we live, work, and play every day right here in God's country. A road network that will show the Pentagon that we are as serious in supporting our troops and investing in America's future. So the hopes are that they will turn around and invest back with us in keeping our soldiers here in North Carolina. Connect NC proposes uh, 203 highway and paving projects in 57 counties across the state, over 100 infrastructure projects in 64 of the counties, and they do it without a tax increase. I think that's very important. The time is right, the time is now, to take advantage of the historically low interest rates that we can get. The Connect NC package, we can create over 15,000 short-term jobs, over 4,000 long-term jobs for our residents right here in the state. Projects will boost the economy of every city and every county in the great state of North Carolina. Not since President Eisenhower launched his interstate highway service, uh, highway system, back in the 1950s have we seen this type of vision for connecting state resources, creating jobs, and increasing our own prosperity. Governor McCrory has the same vision to connect us to the 21st century through these bonds and statewide investments in roads, education, parks, public health, rail, and technology. My friend the governor said it best when he said, today we are enjoying and benefiting from the investments made by our parents and our grandparents. Now is the time to seize the moment and make the investments that will benefit our children and our grandchildren for generations to come. Governor, thank you so much for allowing me to deliver this message. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eric Gukan, my education advisor, you've done an outstanding job. Education, transportation, roads, ports, military, parks. This is the best of North Carolina. This is what separates us from the rest of the United States. We have the best of everything in North Carolina. Nothing compares, nothing compares to North Carolina. 
But we better not take it for granted, and we better start and continue to invest in the future. There has not been a bond in over 15 years in North Carolina, and yet during that time we've become the ninth largest state. And we've got counties from all over and cities from all over the state right here. All of these people now are going to lead the effort to uh, convince our legislators. The people behind me are the boss. They're my boss. They're my board of directors. Not on the dotted line, but you do vote, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're my boss. And uh, you need to tell the, the, the people, the representatives here in, in the Beltline uh, to listen to us and take some action. And uh, we look forward to continue to work with our partners behind me. they got a tough job. They've got a lot of responsibility. We've got to respect that responsibility. We've got to respect that position. But they also have to be respectful of what you want to happen, their constituents. So uh, this is the best in North Carolina. I want to thank you very much for being here. We're going to take just a few questions, primarily on topic, if at all possible. And then, uh, and then I'm going to get them across the street. It's too many to feed right here. <laughs> they might cut my budget if I do that. Any quick questions? If not just for me, but I've got these other individuals. I'd rather have them answer the questions. I'm here enough. I, I recall that it's like today was like a hard deadline, I thought, for getting this package out. Is that deadline moved now? The, the Board of Elections requested uh, June 30th would be the easiest time so they could get out the material. But we still have, I think, the whole month uh, and, and a little bit more by state law as we've got clarification on that. Initially, the Board of Elections told June 30th, but we have more time than that. And uh, let's use that time and not waste it away like we've had the last month. We've had this plan out there now for three months, three months, at least three months. Let's start working on that plan. And, and by the way, we welcome legislative, legislative input, especially on the infrastructure projects. This was a proposal. And a lot of these legislators behind me are giving us some good ideas, especially on the infrastructure list. That's part of their job. We, we want to respect their part of the process. So uh, we want to get that and the budget done and the economic development bill plan done. We need them all done right now. The economic development plan we need right now as we speak, right? Yeah. 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 All right. One or two other questions. Yes, Steve. You, uh, sir, you said yesterday that uh, you would not uh, sound like in the letter that you sent to the legislature that you had drawn a line in the sand of revenue shifting from the counties, uh, any kind of revenue shifting at the municipal level. Do you have any other lines in the sand that you want to tell the legislature? I think my letter speaks for itself. I think my letter is pretty clear on where I stand on certain issues and where I think there's some flexibility between the. I, I want to let you know that I've had very positive dialogue with uh, legislative leaders here in the executive mansion for the last three weeks. We've been having breakfasts and ongoing discussion, but as I say in my letter, there's a lot of division right now between not just the two chambers, but between the two chambers and the executive branch. But that's why the framers made two chambers, right? <laughs> but now, now, now we have a sense of urgency. And part of the sense of urgency, we've got other local governments who are waiting for these decisions to be made. We've got school boards waiting for these decisions to be made. We've got businesses, small businesses and large businesses a lot who are waiting to see what are the decisions because they're being impacted by either decisions or the no decisions on so many of these things. Um, I don't want this, I don't want part of these packages to be the um, lobbyist employment bill. I want the employment to be outside <laughs> among the hardworking people of North Carolina. Yes, sir. Uh, local governments, uh, if local governments uh, are supportive of this, they would also have to put the bill for a fall election all the precincts would have to be open. Have you discussed that uh, today? Any feedback about, about You know, that didn't come up today, but we've discussed that in the part. Lee Roberts and I would, would make sure and we'd work with the representatives behind us to put in a budget uh, money to pay for the county elections in those areas where there are no municipal elections or open up those precincts. I think that's the fair thing to do. By the way, the cost of that is much less the cost of doing nothing. If we do nothing and the interest rates if the interest rates go up one point, Lee, what, how much does that cost the taxpayer? Uh, $30 million. $30 million. So the longer we wait, the more money it costs. So I think it's worth several million dollars, a couple million dollars to help pay for the county's uh, uh, electric uh, voting. Any other questions? One more, and this is it. Yes, ma'am.
I think there's division. And I'd, I'd maybe allow the legislators to talk more about that one and one, but uh, I think there's division um, within each uh, chamber, and there are a lot of different ideas. There are some people want to do nothing. There are some people that don't want to borrow money. There are some people go, well, I only do it if I get something in my county. There are some people who uh, only want it for universities, or some people only want it for roads. There's typical divisions, as I talk to other governors throughout the nation. This is a very unique dynamic, not a unique dynamic going on. But it's, it's these four or five gentlemen behind me's job to pull it together. And they're working hard to try to do that. I want to compliment these five individuals who are, who are really trying. But we need to uh, get both chambers involved. And um, I don't believe in the concept of not having an appetite for action. I believe action is needed, especially in this very competitive world, and action is needed to prepare this state for the next generation. I have an appetite for that. Thank you all very much.